So when we offer a screening test to a large population of people, the standard of proof for that test should be very, very high. It just so happens that the PSA is a bad screening test. Um, it has false positives and false negatives in a, at a high rate. And um, it also is dealing with a disease that's got a very, very wide spectrum of aggressiveness. Um, most prostate cancers are um, not aggressive. In fact, um, in you know, autopsy series studies have shown that prostate cancer is incredibly common in old men. Yes, that's correct. Uh, we've done, uh, uh, there's been a lot of studies done uh, in regard to trying to find out how common prostate cancer is out there in the community. In statistical terms, we would say that it's statistically normal to have some prostate cancer cells in one's prostate as one ages. Mm. But the chance of my dying of prostate cancer is much, much, much smaller. It's often hard as a GP. I mean, you're sitting, the patient comes in, they say, look, I've turned 50. Um, I've, can you just check that I haven't got the prostate cancer, doc? Informed decision making, shared with the patient, is what's needed. And you need to talk about the numbers. Surely it's just another blood test on it. Three letters on the end of the form. That's such an easy and slippery road to go down because once you've written it and then you get the positive result, then you're committed. It's very hard to then say, oh, yeah, you know, seem to be at an increased risk of having a prostate cancer. Should we just sit on that? That's much more difficult for the patient to, to, to cope with. Much better to, to deal with it before, before you do the test.